Hey Vinyl Community, this is Ron. I'm back with another record showing. And this time around I've got some recent pickups that I got uh, last weekend and this weekend. And um, after that I'm going to show some of my uh, leftover nicer psych original pressings. It's a lot of the stuff that uh, people kind of first familiarize themselves with entering the psych world, but uh, no, it's it's. I want still want to get it out there in front of you guys, and there's going to be a lot more psych to come. But this is kind of the remainder of the last uh, kind of bottom of the barrel of the cream of the crop sort of thing. So uh, let's get going. The first one I want to show is the Flaming Groovies Flamingo, and this is the first album on Kama Sutra 1970. And this is an excellent four-star album. And I had never heard this before, so I, I just recently picked it up last weekend and I really liked it. It's kind of a, it's kind of a weird mixture of, uh, kind of like, uh, sort of 50s rock, updated 50s rock, and uh, garage rock, uh, heavy rock, and psych. And, uh, Everything was written by the band, and uh, this features their original lead singer, and uh, it's definitely really cool. Um, the next couple albums after this one were really good too. Uh, Teenage Head and Shake Some Action, I have yet to hear those either. The one prior to this one was on Epic, and I've heard that it was an okay album, but it bombed. and. Uh, because of that epic drop, the band, and uh, they may have regretted it later because their, their following albums were quite quite good. So yeah, this is definitely a cool one to get, Flamingo. And I just got this one today. It's uh, The Twelve Dreams of Dr. Sardonicus by Spirit. And I used to have this album and I got rid of it and then I, I started feeling the need to get it again. I mean, it's a great album. It's probably their most commercially successful one. And uh, the cool thing about it, it's in the original shrink with the sticker, Nature's Way. Um, this is a, a second pressing on the orange label. First pressings will be on the yellow label, but it's clean as a whistle. And I just, and being in the shrink and having a gatefold cover and everything. I just couldn't pass it by, so I, I def, you know, I got it. Then I picked up this Neil Young bootleg, and uh, this is an earlier one on uh, contraband, contraband label. And uh, there's a, quite a few different pressings of this one. This is an earlier boot. It's from 1972. And I have another uh, Neil Young uh, version of this album. It's a little bit different variants. The very first pressing of this was on blue vinyl. I'm a pretty big Neil Young fan. You know, I've, I've been into him for quite a long time and uh, I've got a pretty good stack of Neil bootlegs. This is a, a Who bootleg that I picked up. And this is a... Uh, 1973 uh, American Tour and it's on the amazing corny phone label and uh, I have some reference books on bootlegs and according to those this uh, is mid 70s. Um, Corny Phone came into existence about 74, 75, and they were putting out records until 1978. Um, some of them will be on the cartoon character label like this, and other pressings will just have a large one and a large two on the labels. But I listened to side one of this, and uh, it's an uh, excellent uh, radio show, uh, King Biscuit Flower Hour. The pressing had a little bit of crackle here and there, but I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's from the 70s. It's an old boot, so, you know, it's too expected, but 
I got a, a graphic equalizer and I was able to boost the sound up. It, it sounded pretty cool. Yeah, I got both of those for 25 bucks and they're pretty clean, so that was a good deal. And then I just got this Iron, Bu Iron Butterfly Heavy, their first album, and uh, it's a mono. And, you know, this album came out in early 68, so monos are quite scarce. Uh, it's on the sort of turquoise tan label. Um, it's in VG, you know, it's, it's definitely been played, but it plays plus, so it's okay. I mean, I can't ever really remember seeing one before, so I was pretty happy to get that, and I got that cheap as well. I, I find some really good deals around in the record shops here in Phoenix. It's, it's pretty amazing. Then I got this Hollow Blues on Roulette, and uh, this is pretty early uh, sort of British Invasion album. Um, there's a single off of this is from 64, so this album may have been recorded like late 64, 65-ish time period. And uh, it's actually, I'd never heard it before, and it's actually a lot better than I expected. They play really fast. I was, I was surprised. And uh, I mean, it had a couple of albums, you know, but this is the first one, and uh, it's pretty cool. I mean, I, I snagged this for like eight dollars, man. It's like, man, I couldn't pass it by. And they got pretty long hair for that time period. I mean, look at the length of hair on this guy right here. I mean, it's down to his damn shoulders. He's the drummer. And, uh, yeah, that blonde hair is something else. Then I got this Tim Buckley, Happy Sad, on Electra. And I had this album, like, years ago, like 30 years ago. And, uh, I had it for a while, and then I got rid of it. And Tim Buckley albums are hard to find here in Phoenix, and usually when you do find them, they're, they're kind of rough. And I found this one, this is excellent condition, cover, record, everything, man. And so I, I bought it and I played it. You know what, I, I really appreciate it more now than probably I did back then because my musical tastes have kind of been more fine-tuned into things since then. And this guy had an amazing voice, multi-octave voice. Um, you know, he, he d fortunately died of drugs, you know, as, and his son died tragically too, Jeff Buckley, who was also a recording artist, he drowned. So two tragedies right there. But uh, yeah, I'd never heard, this is actually the only Tim Buckley album I've ever heard, you know, I, I really want to get um, the second one, which I heard is really good, so I'll keep looking. All right, um, that's it for the recent pickups, and now I'm just going to start breezing through uh, some of my nicer psych that I've got. This first stuff is this going to be like individual titles, and uh, a lot of this you've seen, but you know I just want to get it out there. Okay, that was uh, what it was. That was just the ending of the Flaming Groovies Flamingo album. In case you were wondering about that, um, I got the Tea Company. And I've seen this quite a bit in the VC. Uh, really cool uh, psych album. The second track, Flowers, is, is pretty heavy, long track. Uh, I think they definitely listened to some like some Floyd or something because it's it's pretty it's kind of in that vein. And it really blows me away that the Lipton T Man is on here. I mean I can't imagine them getting permission to use that guy, but I think copyright laws were different back then. I mean, probably now if some band put that on there without permission, they'd get sued. But I remember that guy when I was a kid, you know, he, he's he definitely a uh, 60s mascot for Lipton. Okay, I got Kaleidoscope, Side Trips, their first album, U.S. band. And it's on Epic. Just real, really cool uh, sort of folk psych with exotic strings and uh, unusual instruments. Just a really good solid album. And there's some old counterfeits of this. So 
on the originals this would all be blue ink and on the counterfeits it's going to be black ink so that's a sure fire way to tell if you've got a counterfeit or, a, or a original uh, this is the insect trust their first album on capital and this is a pretty unusual album I, I originally had this back in the 80's then I got rid of it and then I was lucky enough to get another copy uh, pretty unusual it's on the black rainbow capital label um, very unusual uh, woodwinds and you know flute and exotic instruments and quite unusual album I haven't really ever heard anything else like it then they had another one on uh, Echo and uh, that one's less interesting here's the Chrome Circus on Command ABC Command and they were a Northwest band and I believe they were Oregon and they were actually a real band they opened up for a lot of uh, bigger name acts that were going through the uh, Northwest area at the time and uh, this is their only album it, it's pretty cool um, Love Sweet on side two it's a sidelong track that's really good and then on side one there's Crystals that's a good track and uh, show you the label yeah, it's not a high dollar album but you know if you, if you spot it and it's pretty good price on it it's probably worth checking out it is their only album you know I really like this uh, glossy cover that this thing has you know like the old jazz albums okay this next one is the unspoken word and this is their first album on Ascot I believe it's the same label as uh, Madford Man unless I'm tripping on that I think I think, I think that was Madford Man and uh, yeah this is a pretty cool album late night psych uh, kind of album you just want to dim the lights to light some candles and just just chill out a uh, real good enjoyable album I like it okay I'm gonna show my West Coast pop art experimental bands albums and uh, this is a this was pretty rough here and uh, it's the reason I have it, I mean, it's it's obviously been well played, but it's an old radio station copy, and it's from KCAC, Phoenix, Arizona, and they were the first uh, underground rock radio station here in Phoenix, and they would eventually become KDKB, so that's why I'm keeping this just for the historical significance surrounding it and this uh, this is my west coast I've already showed this one it's got the Walgreens price sticker on it it's a mono cover and it's got a stereo sticker um, a lot of the record companies uh, did that back then um, when they were go, you know changing from mono to stereo format and uh, it's just cost cutting um, rather than trash all the covers they put stickers on them. Electra did a lot of that. Um, this is their second album volume two and look at that cover man it's just gorgeous for a black cover just amazing and uh, this is an original copy on the tricolor label I love this album. I'm, I mean, a lot of people like their other albums, but there's just to me there's just something about this album. I, it just really appeals to me. I like it a lot. I just think it's probably their most experimental. Uh, this is the third one, and this one is on an orange top label. I think that is the original label for this. I don't believe it ever came out on the tricolor. And this is a really good laid back trippy album. I like this one a lot too. 
I don't have any of the original ones that came out after the, the reprise editions. Like, uh, Where's My Daddy? I do have a, a reissue of that. I don't have a Markley A Group. or I need to work on that. Okay, I, I got... Uh, Here's my ultimate spinach, and you know this is well known. Everybody's got it pretty much in the in the psych world, and uh, yeah, I used to see these a lot around Phoenix. I mean, you used to be able to get nice clean copies for anywhere from eight to ten dollars here in town, and now they're you know thirty, thirty-five dollars for a near mint copy. And this is the second one, Behold and See. Um, this is a this is a long album. This is like 50 minutes. Um, really good. Uh, probably not as good as that first one, but definitely close. And the one that came after that, you want to probably want to avoid that one because it's not even the same band. The only original member is Barbara Hudson, and uh, yeah, I think it was probably just more of a contractual obligation kind of a thing where they had to get a band together and put out an album to fulfill the contract. But uh, I read that the original band name that they chose was actually Underground Cinema. And then when they got signed to uh, MGM, their manager gave them the name Ultimate Spinach. So that's kind of interesting. Their true chosen name is Underground Cinema. Okay, I got uh, Beacon Street Union, uh, excellent Boston pop psych band. I'm sure a lot of you guys know this. I got a real nice clean copy of this, and I think there's actually a black label of this. The very, very first runs were on black label, um, unless those are Canadian. I, I'm not exactly sure, but I think there was a U.S. black label pressing of this. So if anybody can verify for that for me, please do. This is their second album, The Clown Died at Marvin Gardens. And this one's a little bit patchy. I still like it. It's got the real cool, spacey, trippy song on here, uh, May I Light Your Cigarette. And... Uh, I love the cover. Cover's awesome. Okay, uh, this is the Collectors out of Canada. And this is their first album. Excellent sort of prog psych. Uh, real moody in some places. Um, kind of has that mysterious door sound. I really like this album a lot. And their second one, this is really cool too. Grass and Wild Strawberries. Some excellent tracks on this. And uh, I've been looking for that first uh, Kilo Kilowack uh, album, um, which is actually The Collectors. Chilowack, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm getting old. Uh, this is HP Lovecraft. Yeah, their first album on uh, Dunwich. No, it's on. Well, it's a Dunwich production, but it's on Phillips. And uh, this had uh, the white ship on it. And uh, I've got a copy. It's a designated promo. It's got a promotional, not for sale stamp in the center of the back cover. Really good album. And then the second one. This is just this is just at the top of the psych heap right here. This is a great record. Yeah, Lovecraft, H.P. Lovecraft two, and I have a book that said that uh, when this was being recorded, like everybody in the recording studio was tripping the the sound engineers and. Everybody involved with the recording process was tripping. I don't know if that's true, but if it is true, it's pretty cool. All right, got some uh, Mandrake Memorial. They were out of uh, Pennsylvania, PA. 
Check that poppy sleeve. That's pretty cool. If you've never seen that before, it says poppy, poppy, poppy. Cool label on that. And uh, yeah, the first time that I heard this album, I had actually found this album in a thrift store. And uh, I'd never heard it before or knew what it was. And I liked it. I think they overdid the harpsichord. I think it's a little too dominant on the album. Um, but still quite interesting album. And then this is their second one, Medium. And this is a definite improvement over their first album. Cool prog psych. And these guys were just a great band, man. I, what they did is just pretty, pretty amazing. And this album is awesome. It's got MC Escher cover. It's Puzzle. And uh, this is just a really cool prog psych album. I think I like this probably better than their second one and first one. Probably my favorite. And it's got an insert. Um, and it's what you can do is you can actually, it's got a spindle hole, so you can actually put that on your turntable. So that's pretty cool. And this has a little different label than. Uh, that first album does. It's got more of a poppy picture. Okay, this is uh, Silver Apples, and I have it in the original shrink with a blurb sticker uh, showing that it had a poster. And this, this it was an amazing album for when it came out in 68. To me, these guys were the first techno band. Um, just amazing prog psych. This is the poster insert. There's a lot of cool uh, Silver Apples videos on YouTube. Um, reunion stuff, so you might, might want to check that out. It's on the cap label. And this is their second album, Contact. And this has got a lot of great killer psych on it. Kind of in the same vein as that first album. Um, I don't know which one I like most. Uh, my Pack on You, uh, yeah, um, Pack on You, Pox on You. Um, that's just an amazing track on here. And uh, yeah, this is really good stuff on here. And the back, uh, the front cover shows them in the cockpit of a Pan Am uh, jet. And there's a bottle of pills up on the control panel. And uh, the back shows a crash landing. And uh, I guess uh, Pan Am threatens to sue the record label over this because uh, they did not give their permission for that photo. It's just Pan Am right here and they didn't like it so uh, I, I, I saw an interview by Simeon the vocalist and he said that, that this album pretty much led to the demise of Cap Records they pretty much folded after this release. And that's what led to their third album not ever getting released. Okay. Now I'm going to show my 13th floor elevators. And this is my original copy of Bull of the Woods. In the shrink. Great condition. Now even though Rocky really isn't on this one much, it's a great album. 
I mean, the other guys did a great job of kind of taking the reins and putting that out. This is the phony live album. It's basically studio demos with phony live crowd noise overdubbed. Um, kind of a shameful album, but um, I still got, this is an original sealed copy that I recently picked up. It's got the um, ventilation hole on it, and so it's the original shrink. And you can tell the original copies of this. If you look at this picture of the first album, it's actually in reverse. Um, and then on the reissues, they corrected that so it would be the right way. But you can always spot an original pressing by the album cover being in reverse. Uh, this is my copy of Easter Everywhere. It's a lesser copy, it's like VG, but I don't care because it's Easter Everywhere. And it has the original uh, inner sleeve, which is quite yellowed. It's definitely been in there a few years. I saw a nice copy of this once uh, in the late 90s, I think it was, and it was like six, I think it was about $65, $75, and it was pretty nice, and I didn't get it. And I could kick myself for not getting that. And this is my original copy of the first album in the shrink, and uh, this is in great condition cover and then this is the vinyl for it. The vinyl is I would say not quite excellent. I, I consider excellent to be just a just a shade below mint minus. So it's not quite excellent but it's just like a little bit below it. I mean, it's like a super strong VG plus, just to say that. So it's a pretty nice copy. And this is my uh, mono copy. And this is sort of VG condition. And uh, you know what, I don't care. It's on the yellow green label, mono. It's got the garagey version of uh, was it tried to hide? Whereas on the stereo version, it's uh, the more laid-back psychedelic version. Um, yeah, pretty cool, man. Uh, fortunately, it was autographed by Deck. Um, I'm just glad Deck didn't write on a label as well. He just wrote on the cover, but. Sorry, Deck, but you're a dick. I don't write on my album covers, so how do you like that? <laughs> that's it, guys. I, you know, uh, that's it for today, and uh, hope you enjoyed it. And uh, I'll get another one out soon. There's gonna be a there's gonna be a time period where my mu mem my uh, video maker is gonna be out of commission. They're gonna be doing some repairs. I think it's going to be about an eight day stretch. So during that stretch, it, I think it's sometime, uh, maybe like just the beginning of the second week of March is when they're going to do this. So during that time period, there definitely won't be any videos from me. So, uh, all right, I'll try to get another one out by then. I'm sure I will. So I'll see you guys.